This is why it is currently impossible to buy a house in Australia. And yes, that includes me and all first home buyers. In fact, that includes 98% of all Australians. That's how many people are priced out of the housing market. The average house, and mind you, this is based off of recent statistics, as of May 2024, the average house is $1.3 million. $1.3 million, which has seen like a 20 to 40% increase in value over the last two to three years. Does that sound sustainable to you, ladies and gentlemen? Does that sound sustainable to you? Let me tell you why it is absolutely not sustainable. Because the average income in Australia is only $90,000, which means the average Australian only makes $90,000. But here's the kicker. Here's what they don't tell you. Here's what the statistics often overlooks. The average income is $90,000. However, 50% of Australians only make $61,000. And yes, this is all income before expenses, before you have to pay your tax, before you have to pay your loans, before you have to pay your groceries. God forbid, in this economy, you have a family that you have to take care of, you have kids. That is the income, $61,000, that 50% of Australians are currently making. So the average income of 90,000 is, is skewed to the top from the high income earners. Now let me tell you what percentage of people are in the high income bracket that can currently afford a house. The average house is $1.3 million, which means the average amount of money needed to afford a house of that caliber, which is the average house, is between $182,000, which is the top 7% of earners and $262,000, which is the top 2% of earners in Australia. I'm gonna fall back on my question from earlier. Does that sound sustainable to you? $182,000 to $262,000, which only the top seven to top 2% of earners in Australia are currently making. You either have to be an incredibly successful business person or in the top 5% or 2% of whatever profession you are currently doing. Now, the only professions I can think of that are making anything remotely close to that are doctors, lawyers, CEOs, successful entrepreneurs, as mentioned earlier, and even so successful entrepreneurs have to be paying themselves that amount of money, that amount of salary, which not many people are, because if they are paying themselves $262,000, of annual salary, that has to be a million plus business in profits, not revenue. So we touched base on the average house. Let's talk about the average unit in Australia. That sits at a measly $760,000. $760,000 to afford the average unit, which means that you need to be making $142,000, which is the top nine percent of earners in Australia. And again, <laughs> I don't know many people currently making that amount of money. Now, I do have to clear up that all of this data is based off of a 20% deposit, which is obviously highly recommended to avoid the crazy, crazy interest, um, home loan interest rates. And it's also based off of a 30% income threshold requirement, which basically means that's the requirement that is needed from you that the banks are looking for in order to get approved for your loan. So 30% of your income, which is why it is $262,000, which is the top 2% of earners. Because let's say I'm making $180,000, they're not, they're not gonna approve me. All my money can't be going towards the loan. That wouldn't make sense mathematically. The total amount of your income that should be going to your loan shouldn't be more than 30 or 40% apparently. So again, I ask you, is that sustainable? Is it sustainable for the top 2% of earners to be able or be the only ones able to afford a house? Here's another thing that is food for thought and something that I think I should mention. Again, there was another study done in the last 30 days as of May 2024, and the study was looking at how many people are currently in severe financial stress. 
Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the heat index or maybe the stock market um, extreme greed and extreme fear index, but this is similar to that, where there's I'm extremely comfortable all the way to extremely stressed financially. They found on average 89% of all Australians are in extreme financial stress. What in the Jamie? So again, I ask you, is this sustainable? Is the current economic conditions sustainable? Absolutely no chance. Unless you're in the top 2% of people and to top 2% of earners, you're either in financial stress or extreme financial stress. So you're screwed. It's either you're screwed or something changes within the next one year, which is my prediction. For example, I've been in entrepreneurship for the last five years and I can bloody tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I haven't even hit the average income in Australia. As entrepreneurs, especially in my industry, expenses are quite high and that often gets overlooked. So entrepreneurs have more expenses, more liability, and overall, you don't pay yourself. I don't pay myself. I pay myself the absolute bare basic in order to just get by. Gone are the days of the Australian dream of wanting a house, and just a decent house, with a decent sized backyard, with decent sized rooms, with the basic necessities in order to have a family, have kids, and have privacy. Gone are the days of all of those things, especially if you have to opt for a unit, which I bloody don't want to. I don't want a bloody unit. Who wants a unit? People beside you, next to you, on top of you, below you, zero privacy whatsoever. Now, of course, you can travel 45 minutes to two hours away from the Sydney CBD if you want cheaper housing, but that doesn't get any cheaper, really. You're still looking relatively between seven hundred and nine hundred thousand dollars, which again is between one hundred and forty to one hundred and sixty thousand dollars that you must be earning annually before any expenses. So it's either you become a slave to your job, where you work day in and day out in order to make ends meet, in order to afford the loan, or you work two jobs and your significant other also works two jobs, but that's the conundrum. That's the conundrum. Traditionally, you don't get married. You don't live with your significant other unless you're married. So in order to live together, you need enough income in order to basically afford the house or unit or whatever you opt for. But of course, you can travel 45 minutes to two hours away from the main epicenter, but you're going to have to change jobs. Don't expect any visitors. Don't expect any family visits. Your entire life is basically in my opinion, significantly more miserable if you just instead try find a way in order to meet the basic income requirements, I say basic, the astronomically ridiculous income requirements that is now only accessible by the top 2% of earners in Australia. Ridiculous. Ladies and gentlemen, if you learned something from today's video, or if you want to debate me down in the comments below, feel free to. I'll see you in the next video.